Ukraine's incursion into the Russian region of Kursk continues. It's still unclear what the stated goals of the operation are. However, what is clear is it's got officials in Moscow scrambling. According to Kyiv, its army has continued to advance. The mass evacuations of civilians, meanwhile, is taking place in Ukraine's border region of Sumy. With the increased fighting since the Ukrainian offensive in Kursk, Moscow has intensified its bombings on this rural area. France 24's Emmanuel Chaz reports. We are on our way to Morhutsia, a village in Sumy region located just five kilometers away from the Russian border. The local Red Cross has to evacuate an elderly person, a high-risk mission, as humanitarian workers are also targeted by Russian bombs. The village seems empty. Hello. Here is Valentina, 79 years old. Gennady tells her she needs to go. Did someone tell you you're going to be evacuated to Sumi? There's no one for me there. Please sit down. They... they lied to me? Well, we don't know. Your family asked us to come and get you and take you to Sumi. They said that there should be the passport here. The passport. Valentina is confused and no longer sure she wants to leave. With the constant risk of bombing, the humanitarian workers have to be quick. After a long hesitation, she agrees to follow them. Valentina can no longer move around without help. Gennady and Sasha take her to a care home in Sumi, where other elderly people from border villages are placed. This village was attacked recently by the Russian Federation with bombs. Today, rockets are being fired. Last time we came, it was when two children had been killed in a bombing. This area is not densely populated anymore. People have been leaving for a while, but I think the bombing is only going to intensify. That's why we're now trying to evacuate as many people as possible. At the reception center for displaced people in Sumi, just like Valentina, hundreds of people have had to leave everything behind. Many have lost all they had and do not know where they will be able to continue living. For more, we can uh, bring in uh, Peter Zalmayev, director of the Eurasian uh, Democracy Initiative, who joins us from Kyiv. Thank you very much for joining us here on France 24 today. Now, it's been 10 days, over 10 days, that Kyiv launched this invasion, this incursion into Kursk, whatever you call it. Do we know what's behind Kyiv's thinking? Well, uh, officially we don't, but at least we have an official confirmation that it is indeed Ukrainian troops. And even if you had asked me about a week ago what the plans were, I would have said probably stick around for maybe a couple of more days, uh, show up Vladimir Putin's uh, regime for what it is, a colossus on clay of feet with uh, porous, undefended borders and ide fixe and a fixation and an obsession with Ukraine so much that Vladimir Putin does not bother to defend his own borders. But right now, I see the intention is to try to get entrenched in Russia's territory in order to use it as a bargaining chip in eventual negotiations with the Russian side. You leave the Kharkiv region, we leave Kursk. Also, it's lifted our morale, the morale of the fighting troops and people behind the front lines lines, which who have been in need of good news for a long while. This is a very daring, risky, but a daring move that has lifted hearts um, uh, here in Ukraine. But once again, the end goal, we don't know yet. And maybe that is part of the design, uh, the, the, the secrecy in which this operation uh, was conducted, uh, was the secrecy, was in secret not only to the Russians, but to most Ukrainians. I would imagine that only a very tight circle of individuals know of the eventual goal of this daring operation. Peter, you said it could potentially be used as a bargaining chip. So essentially what Kyiv would essentially take control of the, uh, a chunk of Russian territory the size of what Russia has annexed of Ukraine and potentially Crimea and say, OK, now let's swap. 
Uh, this could be, once again, uh, the numbers simply bear this out. There are reinforcement, uh, the reinforcements uh, that have arrived in the last few days. I think, uh, you know, we can now talk about at least 10,000 Ukrainian troops present there, as many as 80 uh, population settlements uh, occupied uh, and maybe uh, an advance as far as 30 kilometers inside Russia's territory. So that may actually be the case. Also, the Ukrainians, is way, they, we are waiting in, uh, to see if you know, the Russians start withdrawing their battle-hardened troops from the you know, hottest uh, points of the front, including Toretsk and Pokrovsk in the Donbass, to try to uh, kick the Ukrainians out. If that happens, that will also have been justified because, uh, you know, we, the Ukrainians, are, are, are bleeding quite heavily. Russians are advancing. Mm -hmm. uh, Pokrovsk is a key uh, place to hold and, uh, you know, uh, a lot is riding on Ukraine's ability to keep it. So far hasn't happened. We're seeing that Russians are continuing the tempo of their advance, but they are finally starting to withdraw uh, their troops elsewhere, including in Kharkiv. So maybe the strategy is uh, slowly but surely working out. Peter, Russia has already started to say NATO weaponry is being used on its territory by Ukrainian troops. We've often heard about red lines by NATO states. Is this not a red line? Uh, well, uh, we have official statements from the Pentagon and other uh, ministers of uh, ministries of defense. They're saying that this is a uh, not really a defense, uh, an offensive operation. This is largely a defense operation. Uh, most Ukrainian allies have uh, vocally uh, stood behind Ukraine's decision to do this. And in fact, we are hoping that in the remaining months of Joe Biden in the White House, and he's announced that uh, in an interview to the Financial Times that he will will concentrate on uh, bolstering uh, security um, relations with uh, both Ukraine and Taiwan, that finally, finally, the White House will be persuaded to lift this ridiculous, um, you know, uh, limitation and uh, on, on Ukraine's ability to use its weapons uh, against Russia. I mean, it already is inside Russia. If it is uh, enabled to use some of the America-provided uh, weaponry, uh, I think it could, uh, you know, develop this operation in into a strategic success. We have some reports that some British tanks may potentially be uh, are being used uh, in this operation. But for in instance, if Ukraine starts using the F-16s, which it has received, that would potentially ruffle further feathers in, in Russia, won't it? Well, well, I mean, uh, the, the feathers have been ruffled. I don't know which, uh, you know, which other feathers remain that have that are unruffled. And I mm. think that's also part of the importance of this operation. It is showing to our Western allies first that Ukraine is able to stage daring uh, offensive operations, offensive defensive operations, and that uh, there are no red lines really to cross. Do not be afraid of Kremlin's red lines. We're already in Russia's territory fighting mm. with uh, some of the Western providers the tanks, as you mentioned, and what? Uh, according to Russia's nuclear doctrine, they're supposed to respond to it with a nuclear s strike. Instead, we don't hear a nuclear rhetoric at all. Uh, there's a, there was a stoppage to all nuclear rhetoric. Now that Russia is sensing that, you know, it's here, it's there, it has to put its money where its mouth is, and all of a sudden it's showing lack of resolve on that issue. So this is very important, and I think it should embolden our Western allies to give Ukraine all its, uh, that it needs uh, to uh, kick the Russians out of its territory. Uh, Peter, uh, we have, uh, you, you mentioned uh, President Biden. His term is coming to an end uh, shortly. Uh, we're not sure who's going to come out on top in November, of course. Uh, could this be why uh, Ukraine launched this um this incursion now and not just because the weather is about to change? Well, I mean, uh, I think the main, once again, the main goal has been to reassure its Western allies that Ukraine is capable not only of constantly crying, we need more weapons, please help us. No one likes this sort of uh, attitude and people get tired. It's a part of human psychology. Uh, people like a success story. And uh, reading Western press and analyses, while most analysts will tell you that this is a risky operation, uh, still a lot of folks have been hardened. And I think this should encourage urge the West to step up its um, uh, support of Ukraine. Peter Zalmayev, uh, thank you very much for joining us on the program today.